All right, all right. So let's go ahead and get started. Nicole was special guest DSS in the building. All right, man, what's going on with you? How you feeling today? I'm good. I'm good. How about you? I am all right. Riding down this highway right now. I'm on 35, about to head back to Ohio. Just got finished spending the day in Dallas. And yeah, now it's time to get back to the great state of Ohio. That's what's up. <laughs> you so know. you look. I'm 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 listening. What you say, ma'am? I said so. You moving, driving? Oh, you moving around? Oh like, yeah, busy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. For sure, for sure. All right, Nicole. Um, why don't you go ahead and uh, you know, let's go ahead and hear your story. Uh, you know how you got started in trucking and uh, and what you was doing beforehand. Um, well, I got started in trucking in the beginning of 2019 and I got started really because I had a couple friends who had their own trucks and, um, I saw, you know, they were doing pretty good and, you know, and I just kind of follow suit. They gave me some advice, kind of coached me along the way and I did what I had to do. I did my own research, did a lot of due diligence for about a year before I even jumped out and started, um, so that's really, it wasn't really much to it. It's just my friends, I saw them, they were doing pretty good, so I jumped in. All right. um, prior to that, prior to that uh, I was a paramedic mm. for about 11 years. Okay. And also, and also I sell real estate in Atlanta. All right. So, uh, Cigar Boss, shout out to the Cigar Boss, because like I said, he, he, he recommended me to talk to you. He said that, uh, you know, you like the top top tier female of uh of real estate in uh atlanta huh oh uh, he gives me too much credit <laughs> <laughs> you say he gives you a little bit too much though but you still do your thing down there right yes that is correct <laughs> all right so before we touch on that man let's touch on the paramedic side so you was an ems you was an ems uh how how did you how how did you get into ems like you know, what made you decide to get into that route? Well, back in the day when I first went to school for it, um, I honestly, I was just broke. I needed a job. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, what can I do? What's the easiest, quickest thing for me to do if I go to school? So um, I was just researching and I saw that becoming an EMT was only like six months or so. Okay. So I went ahead. And, so I went ahead and did that. And then as soon as I finished EMT school, about maybe three months later, I was like, wait a minute. The paramedics were making way more money. We were all still doing the same thing. Right. So I went so I went back to school for uh, about two years, and then I finished, and then I started working out here in Atlanta. Okay. So so what's, so what's you're saying there's a difference between the EMT and a paramedic? Oh, yeah, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. what's, what's, what's that difference? Because I, I always thought they was the same. Yeah, I know. Most people do think if you're the same. Um, the difference is basically the scope of practice. Paramedics can do a lot more than the EMTs can, and we have a lot of medications and things that we can give that EMTs cannot. So that's really like a it's, the scope of practice is really like the main thing. So you like so of course you know you know I I've, I've been in the ambulance before and I've been worked on myself. Uh, before so being a paramedic is like being the being the barrier between between me and the doctor sort of say yeah you could say that oh okay 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 so i i, I know 11 years I, I know you got some you know some stories what would be a <laughs> what, what would be an interesting story you could tell us that happened to you you know while you was at work as a paramedic um, oh my gosh, I've had so many things happen to me. Um, one time I was in, I was running a call. My partner was driving mm -hmm. and I was in the back with a psychiatric patient mm -hmm. and he was probably about seven feet, three inches tall. He was really tall and he weighed like 350 pounds. So he was like really a really big guy. Mm -hmm. And we were riding down the highway here on uh, 7585 in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I never forget. He just kind of like snapped. And I was sitting there in a the chair and he grabbed my wrist and he pulled me across the structure and was trying to open the back door to pull us both out because he told me that he could kill me and get away with it because he had mental health issues. Wow. So, you know, he, 
Yeah, he was smart enough to know what to say. You know, like he, he definitely had some mental health issues, but he knew that he could say, oh, if I if I kill you or do anything to you, he said nothing is going to happen to me. So I was yelling and screaming. We're in the back fighting. And my partner, my, my partner stopped the ambulance in the middle of the highway near yeah, um, Morehouse and Spelman. Oh. Yeah. So they had to stop it. My partner stopped and um, she was on the radio yelling for help and so, like, a couple minutes later, a whole bunch of police and all of our supervisors and everything showed up. But that was one of the many crazy things. Wow. So, it, what, okay, so what was, like, maybe a, 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 a horrible time uh, that that you that you probably can remember? Like, you know, somebody, have you ever experienced somebody dying on you on the way to the hospital or something like that? Yeah. Absolutely. That has happened a few times. I mean, when you're in that profession, you know, it's going to happen to you. <laughs> it's going to happen to you at some point. Yeah. When 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 you went out the first time and it, the first time that it happened to you, how how did that make you feel? Mm, I'm going to be honest with you. In that profession, you don't really have a lot of feelings and emotions <laughs> like mm -hmm. because you can't, you know, because if you do, then you have a hard, you know, you have a hard time doing the job. But, you know, I never I just looked at it like, you know, of course, I kind of evaluated what happened, the call. Could I have done anything differently? You know, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes there's nothing that you really can do, you know. Man, I, I, I don't know if I can I don't know if I can handle a, a, a position like that, though, for real. <laughs> I mean, you know. Have you ever been in a have you ever been in a situation that uh that that was scary like you know they they call you into a into a heavy area like somebody you know just got shot and that person that's still large or something like that Um I was called I was dispatched to a domestic one time and they actually the dispatch um dispatched it incorrectly and it was actually supposed to be domestic and they didn't calling in as a domestic, it came in, it's like, just something crazy. So when I got there, it, it came through as just something like real basic. So when we pulled up, the kind of apartments that it was, like, you had to be really careful because they would break into our trucks and steal our stuff. So when we got there, I told my partner, I said, hey, you just stay in the um, truck and I'm just going to go get the patient and I'll come right back. So I walked up two, three flights of stairs to the apartment building. And when I got there, the door was kind of like cracked mm -hmm. and I kind of peeked in. And when I peeked in, I saw like like lamps and stuff like on the floor like something was going on and i swear it was probably all two seconds by the time i was like mm, something don't look right the guy swung the door open he had a pistol in his hand and he was like i advise to get out of here right now wow. so i took off right <laughs> <laughs> i know you was on the radio like 911 911 and, and the crazy thing is didn't even have my radio in my hand. I only had my phone in my pocket. <laughs> oh man! So, so you you spent eleven years in the profession. Uh, would, what was the reason why you uh why you came out of it? Um, honestly, I was really burnt out after you deal with uh seeing you know like bad things all the time. It mm. it kind of burns you out. Yeah, it it does mess with your with your with your mental status every, every every so often, right? Yeah, yeah. So you have to, you know, after a certain amount of time, you just kind of be like, oh, I I don't really want to do this anymore. I got to find something else. <laughs> well, during the during the eleven during the eleven years of the time, has have you ever got a call that involved one of your family members? Luckily, no. Good. Because I, yeah, I, I got I got a friend that's uh, that's a cop in uh, in in Cleveland, and he 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 got the unfortunate call of his uh, family members and all like that. So yeah, that wasn't that wasn't a feel good moment for him. <laughs> yeah, that that would that yeah that to me that would that's like the worst call ever is to have to respond to something like with your own family or friends. That's the worst thing ever imaginable. Exactly. All right. So, so skipping from uh, paramedics, you decided to uh, get your realtor's license and started doing uh, uh, real estate. What, what, mm -hmm. what, what was uh, what was your experience with that? 
Well, I was probably, I was still working as a paramedic and I was like, oh, let me see what I can do to bring in some more income. Um, and I had a friend who was also a realtor at the time who had just got licensed. So if I didn't really know, you know, get it, I didn't know a lot of information on it. I just knew, hey, they were making some nice commission checks, you know. So I was like, well, let me go to real, let me go to real estate school too. So I went with another friend and my other friend failed the test the first time we took it, but I passed. So I went ahead and signed up with the brokerage, and that was in 2014, and it, it, the first year was rough, but after that, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Now, can you do me a favor and explain to me what, what do they mean by closing? What, what do that exactly entails? Well, closing basically means you're at the end of your home buying process. You're at the closing table at the attorney's office. You are getting your keys in your hand that day, and you can go to your new home. All right. So from so from beginning beginning to end of a home buying process, uh, let's say I come to you. I say, Hey, Nicole, I'm I'm interested in uh, moving down to Atlanta, and I'm looking for you know looking for a home. What will be the what will be the beginning? Now we you just explained the closing. So what will be the beginning of my journey? Well, the first thing I would talk to you about is I would kind of vet you out a little bit before I sent you over to a lender. Mm -hmm kind of see which lender I would want to send you to. Like I sometimes have some clients that have really great credit, no credit blemishes or anything like that, and I can send them to a certain lender. And then I have some that kind of have some credit issues, so they need a little bit more help. Mm -hmm. So I know where to send them to. So once I vet you out and then I send you to the lender, the lender will start the pre-approval process with you. Basically, they'll just collect, they'll collect all of like your um, employment information, your taxes, mm -hmm. bank statements, you know, that and then they'll come up with an amount they can approve you for. So they'll say, Hey, I can approve you for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You know, this would be a monthly payment. This is your down payment that you need, whatever, whatever. Okay. Once you get your pre approval, once you get your pre approval letter, then me and you would go house shopping. So you would basically say, Hey, I'm looking for a three bedroom, two bath house, I need um, a two car garage, I need a fence or you know, whatever you need, and then I'll search the MLS system. And I'll look for listings that kind of match your criteria, and then you just go from there. Once you find a house that you like, what we'll do is we'll submit an offer, and hopefully that gets one. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So if so, it's like doing the lending, looking for a lender process is more like uh, when a person go car shopping. Like you know, they they put their name out to a whole bunch of lenders and see which one would, 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 would give you the loan pretty much. It's kind it's not really like that because when I send you somewhere, like you're not, your, your credit is not full time. That's the reason why I try to vet people pretty good so that I know who to send you to so that we don't have those kinds of issues to where you have to, you know, go through multiple lenders. But sometimes it does happen because stuff pops up, you know, during the during the qualification process. And then sometimes you do have to switch a, to a different lender. But that's why I usually try to bet you really good so I know exactly where to send you. Okay. Now, being a, re being a realtor, you guys get paid commission off the sale of the house, right? Correct. So that means that in order to in order you to get actually paid, they will have to actually receive the keys. And then that's when you <laughs> actually get paid. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so sometimes you can work with people for two or three months and the deal falls through and you've done all this work and you don't get paid. Yeah. That's what I was about to ask you. So what happened? Like what, what happened? Have you, <laughs> have you experienced anything? Like I'm assuming you have, but yeah. What, what, <laughs> yeah. I have. What, what do you, what do you do? to you know what do you do to like not get discouraged um i mean you just have to look at it like hey stuff happens sometimes and you know of course i would like my commission check but at the same time if my clients deal fall through they're going to be i'm more concerned about them than i am about my check because you know when you're getting ready to buy a house you're you're anticipating, you know, moving your family into it. And, you know, you've already got things set in place. And then when deals fall apart, especially at the end, it's just, it's the worst. But, you know, sometimes stuff happens. It's just, you know, it is what it is. Wow. I, man, I, I mean, you putting in, I, I mean, you putting in work. 
like, you know, you putting in work, making sure that the deal will go through, making sure that your clients is happy, making sure that the lending lending works and all like that. And then all of a sudden, yeah. all of a sudden it just it just breaks off and it's I mean, I can't I, I can't imagine how you would feel like, yo, I put in all, you know, put in three, four, five months of work and I ain't got paid. <laughs> like yeah. so you yeah. So with reality, <laughs> with reality, with reality, you really gotta have a second, a, a second job, a, a a backup job, in order to, in order to continue to take care of your business and everything, your bills well, and everything, right? Well, not necessarily. I mean, for me, I like to have multiple streams of income because, as you can, like we're talking about now, stuff does happen. Like last year, especially when COVID yeah, hit, yeah. I lost, I lost, I lost a lot of deals last year, Man. and I had a lot of stuff fall apart. Um, it was last year was pretty bad for me. Some people did well, but last year was really bad for me because a lot of um, lending guidelines changed all of a sudden once COVID hit. It was just a mess, um, but it did help to have. You know, other streams of income. There you go. There you go. All right. So, being in the real estate business, I, I have a friend, you know, that owns a couple of houses and all like that, and he rents out to, you know, rents out to people. Uh, of course, you know, TikTok is huge now, and it was an app for kids, but it looked like a whole bunch of adults just came and took <laughs> it over. But I, I noticed a few. Uh, a, a few of them had some raunchy ass tenants. So, do, <laughs> so do you do you have any? Uh, do you have any? Uh, you know, rental property yourself? I, I did have rental properties, and I sold them. And this was some years ago. Reason being is I hated dealing with the tenants. I was in mm. court all the time. Mm. I was I was just miserable. So I told myself after I sold those properties. I was like, um, I didn't want to be bothered anymore. And that that's just me. I just didn't want to be bothered. I mean, no, it was I, bad. I totally, <laughs> totally understand because like I said, some of the some of the tenants in the beginning would make it in the beginning, they'd be like look like they all cookie cutter and, and look like they'll work yeah. out and all like that. And then all of a sudden you get them in your house and they just yep. they they just yep. turn they just turn face with 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 some uh with some messed up tenants. Well, besides the fact, of course, is that nobody wanted to pay rent when when rent was due. They were going months without paying. I had one. We went to court, and she, so she hadn't paid me rent in about three or four months. Hold, we hold, went hold, to court. Hold, hold, hold up, Nicole. Hold up, Nicole. Oh. Let me. Oh. oh, hold up. How can I? I can understand people have issues you know maybe that maybe that check wasn't right first time but how the <laughs> hell can you how the hell can you stay somewhere without paying somebody rent that's that's what i listen in the, in, in the state of georgia it was rough because it seemed like they were more um for the tenant at that time and that was another thing that was very discouraging to me but we went to, one of the times that we went to court the last final time that we went to court she told um the judge that the house was in foreclosure and she didn't think that she needed to be paying rent. And I said, well, how can the house be in foreclosure when I pay cash for them? So, you know, it was just, so after that, the judge ended up giving her like an additional 45 days in the property. So when I, finally, yeah, <laughs> when I finally went back, so she hadn't paid me in like three months. Then the judge gave her an additional 45 days. Um, she finally got left out the house. I mean, she took all everything like it was brand new stainless steel appliances and everything, brand new wash and dryer. She took all my stuff, and then her and her girlfriend, I think, were in there fighting because there was blood and holes all on the wall. It was God. just a mess. So the, the 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 judge gave this chick you you already you and I'm I'm just speculating. I'm I'm and I'm just saying the low end. So you you know about five hundred dollars a month. So you already out of a grand. <laughs> And now you out of an extra fifteen hundred dollars. Then on top of that, the damages. Let's let's just say the damages. Mm, let's say ten thousand. So we are looking at about a. It, it prob, uh, you know probably might be more, but I'm just you know I'm just ballparking here. So you're looking at about 
let's round it up to like 12K. You out of 12K. Mm -hmm. How do you come back from that? Um, <laughs> you either just deal with it or for me, I was just frustrated. So I sold my properties and I sold them all at the same time. <laughs> and, I, and I collected my money. And stopped. Yeah, and I, I and I see what's up. now. Like I said, I can understand uh, a person might be going through a hard time, and I, and I'll call you up and say, right. hey, you know, I hey landlord, you know, I got laid off. Um, you know, give me a you know, give me a little bit of leeway until I find something else, and you know, I'll try to you know, I'll try to make good on you know, try to make good on, but literally, yeah, but not not paying and then go back to court and and tell the judge how the hell she know what's going on with you though like how you gonna tell the judge like yo bro judge uh and she, she's in she foreclosure how do you know the judge didn't ask That's that <laughs> I know I never asked her, but she was adamant that I was in foreclosure and I was confused because I'm like, wait a minute, how am I in foreclosure? Like, I paid for this house in cash. <laughs> but you yeah. in for but you in for I mean, but you in foreclosure though. Yeah, per per her, yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So you, you you had to hurry up and 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 get up off of that after she cleaned you out on that. That's that's messed up. I I collected my checks from I sold them homes, collected my checks, and I have never looked back. <laughs> I got you. I don't blame you. All right. So all right. So art well, before we get into trucking, are you still you you are are you still in real estate now that you know COVID yeah. is coming, you know, well, we leave leave it up to these shippers and receivers. A lot of the shit that we can't we can't use their restroom because of COVID. Bro. Right. <laughs> right. That's just an it's just an excuse. Mm -hmm. All right. So now you decided you, you wanted a new challenge. You you wanted a new journey. <laughs> where where did trucking come into play of uh of all of this? Because usually when people is in trucking, they look towards real estate as the <laughs> as the uh as the backup money plan. But you was in real estate and you looking at trucking, like how did that come into play? <laughs> This has definitely been the most challenging adventure that I have ever taken on. I must say that social media makes it look like it, trucking. Yes, yeah. social media makes it look so glamorous and like it's very easy. Um, and it is like a bunch of not truths. Uh oh, shit! Here we go. Here we go. All right, so uh, let let me now, now hold up before you start. Uh, D, are you still on here? Boom. <laughs> let it ride. Let's ride. <laughs> now, now, my man DSS. I, I, I met him. Uh, I met him. We, we, what? Three years strong now, bro, or two? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Going on I, I, I met him through uh through a social media. Uh, <laughs> a, a, yeah, I was a, in my backyard I, cooking. I, 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 I met him through a social media guru. He he was in a he was in a live feed, and mm -hmm. I I was very interested in him, and I brought him on the show for the first time, and uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, he has some very strong opinions <laughs> about these uh, social media gurus. Uh, DSS, yes. uh, this this is uh, this is uh, Nicole Shine, but give the people a little bit of background on how you feel about about these gurus out here, man. I think everybody should all strive harder and succeed and get great benefits of everything that they're doing. I think they all should continue lying and fucking over everybody so they can eventually <laughs> die so we can get back to business. <laughs> That's what's up. All right, so Nicole, um, you 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 agree with me and him that it's a it's it's a lot of it's it's a lot of BS out here when it comes to social media. It's a lot tracking. of tech, a lot of finessing, whatever you want to call it. It's a this is this is the thing. 
people who are looking to get into trucking and they're on social media and they're trying to figure out, oh, should I take this class or this and that, before people are paying money for this kind of stuff, they need to get with the person. I need to see some profit and loss forms. I need to see tax records because these people are out there lying. You need to, you, like, you like me. It's like when I did my little rant. You like me. I, I need to see the, I need to see the platinum plaques on the wall. Exactly. <laughs> I need to see where I, I need to see where you got your 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 hits from. Like you know exactly. how you know how the rappers come up and they be like, yo, you know, I, I looked at I looked at Rakim and our, uh Eric B. I looked at Run DMC. Yeah, they got their platinum plaques on the wall, and they wasn't out there trying to sell the shit either. So here's somebody right. over here that's charging five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars, fourteen hundred dollars. For the same shit that you can figure out for yourself on, you know, yep. on Google. Now, when I came into the game six years ago, I ain't go through all of that. I went, got my DM, I went to the DMV, got the book, got the, it, 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 at that time, it wasn't even no apps. It wasn't no apps. Right. CDL Genie, mm -hmm. CDL Prep, CDL yep. this, that, and the third. No, I went there, I had to study. Study. Study yeah. and study. Now there was a website for the Ohio, uh, through the Ohio DMV, but other than that, that's what I had to do. I had to study. I did not. I did not. Uh, I did not. At that time, it wasn't that many. You know, it wasn't that many quote unquote gurus. You know what I'm saying? And and I even if, and even if there was. I still wouldn't have. I still wouldn't have rent that route. I I I love the route that I went. When I went to school, I paid my money, and when I paid my money, they asked me. They said, "Yo, hmm, uh, you you want to test out in a manual or you want to test out in a in a in an automatic?" I said, "Bro, I want to test out in a manual, manual because right, I did right. I, I did my research money." Number one is because I don't want to be subjected to any company. That's number one. Right. And number two, mm -hmm. I want to test out in the manual because I want my options to be a lot better. So he was like, he was like, he was like, you sure you want to test out in the manual? Yeah, bro. I paid $5,000 to test out in the manual. The fuck? <laughs> this shit. Give me, give me half of my money back if you want me to test out in the damn automatic, bro. <laughs> you are right, but, but, you, but but you know even that even just talking about you know you went and got you got your CDL you did what you had to do but a lot of these people out here too are starting these businesses and they have no knowledge of the industry oh. they haven't done any and then they ha don't even have a CDL so it's like you get out here you're like oh I'm buying the truck you bought a truck and then the next thing you know you're out here begging for drivers and I don't know where you're going to find them good luck but do you do you think be, before we talk a little bit more about yourself, do do you think that the people that don't have their CDLs, because you know, granted, there has been some failures. Well, no, there's been a lot of failures, but there's been a little bit of marginal success with people that don't have CDLs that runs that runs you know their company, but they have some mm -hmm. excellent help in the background too. But for the people and that that's, not, that, that's the only way you can get around it. But for the people that don't have their CDLs. Do you think do, do you think that the uh that they should have their CDLs just in case they get that bougie ass driver that fucks them up and they'll be able to go and get their equipment? Well, this is what I this is what I think. I think that if you don't have your CDL, that's okay, but have somebody on your team, a strong person that you mm -hmm. you know that's on your team that does have a CDL because I mean, like you said, these drivers, I mean, sometimes will leave your stuff for whatever reason. And I mean, your truck, you may be in Georgia and your truck is in Ohio. How mm -hmm. you going to get it back? What you going to do? So if you have a CDL, you know, you got to have somebody on your team that does. Now, people, you know, again, you know, me and Diaz and uh, Cigar Boss, we talk about this shit all the time. But the people out here, they they like shortcuts. I, I think that's what it is. They they don't want to they don't want to go through the mud. They don't want to go through the grind. They want the shortcut. They they go to social media. They see the they they see this one that only been in the game for four years, and you know they call themselves going through the mud and all like that. But 
<laughs> but they they see that you know they they get with they get with that social media person and all like that and they they gravitate towards that the people that 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 does that do you think they take advantage of them if they if they want the people that just want the shortcut I think in some cases that does happen. And a lot of these people who are gurus or whatever, a lot of, some of them, I won't say uh, definitely not all of them, but a lot of them really don't have any, have no knowledge. They've never been in a truck, but if you're going to pay them that, thing to them, I keep I on, you know, they're going to keep on saying, Hey, I got some more information. When you want to take this class or you want to do this, you want to take this class. So they're going to take the money as long as you are going to give it to them. Wow. All right. So let's uh let's get with you. Cigar boss mentioned that um that you flat bedding. Mm-hmm. We yeah, we flat bed. Wow. So first thing first, you did you did you of course you went to school and got your license and everything? Yeah, but I don't drive. Wait. Bingo, 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 bingo. Wait, 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 wait what? Yeah, but I don't drive. Uh, but she can tarp and chain. Yeah. Oh, I can do all that, but I just don't drive. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. But you do got your CDL, though. Yes. But you don't drive. Nope. Oh, shit, no. Okay. What, what's what's Talk up? Talk about what, boss moves. What, what, what am I missing here, Nicole? What, what's going on? What, you you got your CDL. You got your truck. You you The, the truck that you got, is it your truck? Yeah. You wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, lockout. Oh, okay now. Okay. Nicole, go ahead and shut this show down and let them know you are also a black female owner of a tow truck. Yeah, I am. Shut this whole shit down because these little <laughs> people are going to understand what's going on here today. Well, this is the thing. Just because, okay, so I have my own authority. I have my own business. I do not drive. Um, there's no need really for me to drive because I focus more on the business side of everything, making sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be, okay. making sure that we stay compliant, um, you know, doing everything that I need to do for the business. And also, like he said, um, I do own a heavy record as well. So oh, that, that whole shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah. See, that's, you know what? I, you know what, I, I, before I got in the truck and I owned my own roadside business and, okay. uh, and yeah. I knew, and I knew like where the money was really at. <laughs> I, I knew the money, you know what I was doing, you know, I was doing the tire, you know, the tire change, the, the, uh, the, uh, door I locks. That's where my neck, that's where my yeah. name come from. But the money, okay. you changing okay. the tires. <laughs> yeah, but the money, bro. When that dude came and and, and hooked me up for the first time, and I and yeah. I seen that I, I seen that uh that invoice. Oh, I knew where the money was at. I, I, I'm in the wrong business. Let me tell you. Go ahead. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you what made me get the heavy record is the first time that I ever had to have one of our trucks towed. We got told less than five miles, and we were charged seventeen. It's like seventeen eighty something, mm. and it was in Pennsylvania. I never forget that. And from that day forward, and we got told a couple more times after that. And I kept saying, "Wait a minute!" I was like, "We out here, you know, you out here having to chase these loads and this and that and this and that." These people are doing five mile runs, taking for, a few minutes, and seventeen hundred dollars. Right. That's what I'm saying. So I was like, wait a minute. So, you know, I did some research into that and um, it took me a little bit of time to find a truck. And, you know, I, I eventually found one. I found one um, last year. Who's who's your who? Not, you, you know what? Not not to be nosy or nothing like that. But my you know, when I was in it, my connects was uh, was uh, America. Uh, America. Uh, shit. It was America. I had an account with uh, with Allstate. I, I I had all of the so uh, the the cell phone accounts. So whoever you call <laughs> through your cell phone to you know for uh -huh. for whatever for towing and all like that, I had all of that. Uh, Roadmasters, and I think my yep. heavy, and I think my heavy uh, my heavy one because I did uh, 
I did tire changes on uh on RVs and all like that. I think it was Ro- mm-hmm. Road America, Road America for them. Road and, Amer- then, and then mm-hmm. I had a partnership. Me and I had a partnership with my guy that had his own tow truck, and then and all my towing. All my toying information went over to him, and I just charged, you know, I just gave him, I just told him just to give me a dispatch fee because majority of my wow. majority of my calls, you know, they would call me up and be like, "Yo, we need a tow and all like that," and I got tired of, uh, I got tired of turning them down. Like, well, you know, I don't have right. it right now, yada yada yada. But you know, I I linked up with my dude, and I was like, "Look, man, you got you got the tow truck. You looking you looking for some more business?" He was like, "Yeah, what's up?" I was like, let's uh, let's 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 do it. So, so yeah, man. So, before you started your tow truck business, because now me and you talk, we we on the same wavelength. We know I hey, <laughs> with your tow truck business, what did you what what did you do to what did you do to start? Because when I started, I was working with this one guy, and I used to get a mm-hmm. I used to get a settlement with. You know, with all of the people that he was fucking with, <laughs> and what I just did, what I just did, I was like, well, "Damn, okay, he's getting this from 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 these people, and he's getting this from that people." So I got on the internet and I started making phone calls. Did you? That's that's what you did. Well, I'm gonna tell you what I did at first. So what I did at first um, was I got on to um, I did like Google ads. So mm-hmm. I was running Google ads. So I was spending maybe about twelve or thirteen hundred dollars a month to kind of be towards the top of the list. Um, you know, like when you do a Google search for like if your truck is broke down. So say somebody type in a commercial tow truck or whatever. So I kind of wanted to be at the top. So I spent maybe about thirteen hundred for that. Mm-hmm. And the phone was ringing constantly, like it was crazy. And it, and it was overwhelming. I'm not going to lie. It was overwhelming. Yeah, but what I have get. done, I have leased the truck on to um, a diesel mechanic shop. Mm-hmm. So they use the truck to, you know, pick up their clients' trucks wherever they are. Right. Oh, I Go ahead, bust this bubble now. Go, hold, hold on, I think I, 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 think I, lost, van too. I think I lost you there for a minute. All right, go oh. ahead. All right, go ahead. Go back. Um, I was just saying that after you know running the Google ads for a while, it was the phone was like ringing like crazy. It was crazy, but now um the truck is leased on to a diesel mechanic shop. So we basically you know we give them the truck and they do what they want to do with the truck and they pay just a flat fee to us. <sighs> That's what's up. That is what's up, man. So, like I said, as far as as far as I, you know, as far as I was in the in in the tow game, I'm, I'm I miss it. I, I'm 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 saving up my money. I'm saving up my money right now to get right back in. You want to? Oh yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. And you you gonna, are you are you going to do heavy? I. You know what? You gonna, I I might I have to. Mean, you know, after no the you know dirty. hush, man. Uh, me and you gonna have to get the me and you gonna have to get together offline, and uh, I, I I'll, I'll I'll definitely definitely uh we'll definitely talk, especially when it comes time for me to make that move. It ain't gonna be this year. It ain't gonna be next year. I can tell you that much. But when I when I get my money saved up right, you definitely gonna be the first person I'm gonna call as far as uh getting in the heavy haul uh heavy haul and, toy. And I'll be I'll be here. And I she got me certified. That. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, towing, uh, uh, boss moves and trucking don't even need to drive a truck, but you got your CDL. What, 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 what else? What, what, what else you doing, man? I mean, you, I mean, you just putting these, fe- these, 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 these females to shame. These so-called gurus. I have something else working right now, but I'm not gonna speak on it right now because it's right. kind of in the process. So, but I do have some else, um, you know, in the pot. And and all of this since since 2019. Yes. Wow. <laughs> man. <laughs> man, Nicole. Well, thank you very much, man. I really do appreciate. It. I I I enjoyed this okay. conversation, man. This is this is oh, wow. awesome. So shout out to my man, uh, Cigar Boss. Shout out to DSX, man. 
Nicole, before you get on up out of here, what 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 suggestions that that you that 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 you can give these new gats out here that's that's thinking about either going in the tow side or on the trucking side? Um, I just, I think the main thing is do your own due diligence. Get online, get on the FMCSA, learn the, learn what you need to do to stay in business. You know, you, I think that's like the major big thing is to do your own due diligence. Don't just go by what, well, this guru said this. You have to actually get on there and you have to read stuff and learn stuff for yourself. Like, I think that's, that's a big, it's just doing your own due diligence. Now, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Who, me or her? To the show. Oh, Nicole, wait. As, a, yeah. as a beautiful female who still looks, dressed, and acts like a female, mm -hmm. how do you feel <laughs> towards the new lot list? I mean, the, the, the yeah. females that's in the business now, and they out here Instagramming and TikToking oh, yeah. in all their club clothes. Hey, and call, you know, and call it and call itself safe. I mean, is that something safe a new female that's trying to, you know, feed her family should do? I mean, I, little, I, a, go ahead. I definitely think this that when you are out there in your truck and you're out there at these truck stops or wherever rest stops or wherever you are and and you have to be careful as a woman. Like it just you have to be careful. Um you know, that's a very touchy subject right there because, exactly. you know, we got a lot, you know, and, and I, I talk with a lot of females that be like, well, that's just my thing. That's just my thing. You know, and, yeah, right. you know, that's just me. But you just they just have to be you have to be very You just have to be very careful because, I mean, it is a male dominated industry. And when you're out there, sometimes there are kind of like some creeps that be out there. I've seen them myself at truck stops and, you know, stuff like that. And they follow you around and they watching you. It's weird. So it's like, you you know, you have to just be careful. And, you know, I just, you know, I, especially out at truck stops and things like that. I just try not to draw, you know, so much um, attention to myself. That's really it. You know what? You want to know? Oh, go ahead. Hey, lockout. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. Think about this. You got these social media gurus that promote prison reform. I only hire the people to come out of prison. Oh. You mm -hmm. got these females mm -hmm. that promote, ah, I can TikTok and twerk while I work. So now you got a joker who just came out of prison mm. versus a chick that's out there twerking right. while she's working. This that joker that just got a prison reform just got this job and he ain't too steady or stable just yet. You got old TikTok Sally over here from the valley twerking her while yeah. she's working. What yeah. happens when these social media dudes make this money from these people and they just put them in the same cesspool? Yeah, what do you think that happens? Is then you got John Elroy from the backwoods of... Uh, off of 70, I, I ain't going to say which state that is, but you know your neighbor state over there, and mm -hmm. he's screaming so when he sees yep. either or. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know that thing called wrong turn? You know, a lot of these new drivers, they make these wrong turns and don't realize ain't nothing down that road. That's very they true. They might get down that road, their head could be the last time they see it. Yeah, that is very true. That's why I think nothing. People. But that's Nothing's why think, more funnier to me when I ride down the road and I see a truck up in the woods somewhere and I see the driver got his hands taped to his ankles and he's bent over the guardrail. <laughs> I just look at him go, uh-huh. <laughs> but you want to be bad, you're